Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another video. So today starts a whole new series. What I'm going to be doing with this series is I'm going to take, let's say, a group of techniques that are done using the same type of paint, but performed in a different way. And what I'm going to do, I'll explain this all to you as we go. What I'm going to do in each video is I am going to take, for example, any type of a technique where you're putting paint into a cup and pouring it onto the canvas, such as a straight pour, dirty pour, freestyle pouring, ribbon pours, traveling ring pours, open cup pours, puddle pours, things like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break them down for you and then I'm going to tell you what the most common recipe is that people use, some other recipes that could work for those techniques, and the one that I prefer to use. So what I'm going to do is kind of work from the bottom up, from the techniques that I feel are more easy to do, and then work our way up towards those hard ones like the bloom. All right, so for this video, we're going to be talking about those techniques, as I said, that you put paint into a cup and somehow get it onto a canvas. So for that, I'm going to set up and we're going to jump right into this dissecting series. That's what we're going to call it because we are dissecting the technique itself and the recipe. The one thing before I begin this, this is my understanding the way I do it. I'll tell you right now, no matter if I've seen a straight pour done this way 8 million times by 8 million artists, there's always going to be the one or two people that say, I do mine differently. This is the, the most popular way that people do these things, okay? It's not the only way, it's the most popular way. And the ones that I personally see and I have personally done that are the most successful doing them this way, all right? So again, paint that ends up in a cup that ends up into onto a canvas. Those are the techniques. Now, I have some listed here, but what happens is people will take something like a straight pour and instead of pouring it straight on the canvas, they'll pour it straight on the canvas and they'll do zigzags and they'll give it a whole different name. So while a straight pour is really just a straight pour, no matter how you do it, you're going to see all these, these videos where new technique, a zigzag straight pour, or a flip your mama upside down straight pour. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but. It's all in reality, just a straight pour, right? So for when it comes to things like a straight pour, what you're doing is you're taking your paints and you're layering them on top of each other in a cup, like a parfait dish. And then when it comes to a dirty pour, you're pouring them into the cup and make sure they, they kind of churn up together. And I'll do a little demonstration of that. So this is what this means when I have this column here that says layered, combined, or either. What I mean by layer is for a straight pour, typically you layer it in the cup like a parfait dish. For a dirty pour, you're pouring them from up high so that they blend into each other the colors. A freestyle pour, you can layer the paints either way in the cup, just like a ribbon pour, and then, you know, pour it out whichever way you want to pour it out. So a ring pour is typically done where you layer paints again on top of each other. So is the traveling ring, the open cup, the open cup, you're putting an open cup on a canvas and pouring paint one after the other on top of each other. So you're kind of combining the paints. You're letting it mix together. Uh, puddle pour, same thing. If you take paint that's in a cup and pour it directly onto a canvas and then you pour another 
color on top of those puddles you made, you're combining the paints. Flip cups, flip and drag cups, they're all kind of combined, right? So what are the popular recipes that people use for those techniques, or I should say common recipes? Well, the first one's always going to be paint and flow trawl. And again, depending on the person you, you see doing this, some people will do one part paint to one part flow trawl and then use more water. Some will use one part paint, two parts flow trawl, use less water, all right? Another common recipe would be paint, flow trawl, and pouring medium using the one part paint, one part flow trial, one part pouring medium ratio. And then there's people that like to use paint and only pouring medium. Then there's those that want to try to do all of this stuff with just glue and water, which I will say you can do. However, if you're looking for things like lacing and cells, you're not going to get it with just glue and water. You're going to need something like a silicone oil to help you out. What I like the best for these techniques right here is a recipe that's made out of flow trawl and pouring medium because flow trawl and pouring medium combined create really special effects. So in that case, what I do for any of these techniques and any of the techniques that have been born out of these techniques like our flip your mama upside down straight pour that I just made up, right? They work the best for me if I use one part paint, one part flow trial, and one part pouring medium. I get those special effects that I like. I get little cells. I get big boulder cells. Excuse me. I get a lot of lacing. And then sometimes some other weird objects pop up in my paintings. You know, it could be anything from, you know, a smiley face to a penis, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I, they, everything pops up in my paintings, it seems like. So that's the one that I like the best. And that's the one I'm going to show you how to do today. Okay. And using the same canvas, I'll just demonstrate to you how a few of these things go. All right. And we'll turn it into one big painting and see what happens. So down here, I always put water if needed. Depending on the brand of paint you're using, you may not need to use water. If you use something like a Deco Art or a Craftsmart or Apple Barrel, one of those fluid little bottles of paint, you're not going to need water when you use something like pouring medium or flow trawl to, to thin it down. When you start needing water is when you start using thicker like tube paints or heavy body paints. You know, a lot of people myself included at one time, see paint pouring and they say, oh, I'm going to go buy some paint and do that. It's not that simple. You have to understand things like the consistency of the paint. Now, if I run out and buy an apple barrel paint and try to do this with just some pouring medium, like I said, in flow trial, it'll be fine. But then if I go and try to do it again with a, a tube of, of heavy body paint, I'm going to be sitting there saying to myself, what in the world? Why is this so thick? And it's not like the other one. So you have to understand that, you know, paints are made differently. They're thicker and all that. But I like to use a fluid kind of paint versus a tube paint a lot of the times because I could get away without using any water. Water is fine for acrylic pouring. Don't get me wrong. But for me, the less of it I use, the better, because I like to use a lot of products that are shimmery, you know, like my Prism Pour or Deco Art 24 Karat Gold, things that have mica flakes in them and things like that, or even Pebio iridescent paints, things like that that have mica in them. They really don't behave well when you have to start adding water into the mix. So that's why... I like to try to use less of that. So in that case, I'll use a little more pouring medium to make up for that water that I don't want to use. Regular tube paints, however, I don't mind putting water in. You'll see here I have a number three CG. 
what that means is these paints to do these techniques for me i like them to bet the best to be a number three thickness on the consistency gauge i always call it consistency chart but it's a consistency gauge if you don't have one of these go in the description and print one out there you can print them off free through poorscraperepeat.com what it does is i'm telling you today my paints are number three you at home can take one of these mix up your paints however you're going to do them fill in this little circle with your colors each each color that you're using pick this up count to five and if the paint reaches a number three you're at the same consistency that i'm using if it goes further, you know your paints are thinner than mine. So this way, if you have a problem doing these and you're not sure if it was the consistency, you're going to know right away you were not at the same consistency as mine. So for me to do a regular acrylic pour here, I like to have them be at about a number three. If it's a little bit before three or after, it's fine. But if it goes all the way down to a nine, you know it's just way too thin. I have a video showing you how to use this chart. I'm going to put that in the description. But as I said, today's video, their paints are all a number three. So I'm going to show you how I make my pouring medium for a technique such as these. And then we're going to play around with a couple of these and I'll walk you through it and I'll explain this better also for you okay flip cups in general i have done some really beautiful flip cups so have there there's plenty of artists that have done them using just glue water and a couple of drops of silicone in fact i prefer for just these two techniques here to use glue and water there's just something about the structure of the cells with the silicone it all jives together really really well but you can do this with you know my recipe here i just wanted to make a side note on these two here because although technically the paint's in the cup and it's going onto the canvas i do prefer for flip cups or flipping and dragging them uh the glue 70 percent glue 30 percent water mixture and then put two parts of that to one part of paint couple of drops of silicone in each color and then have fun with it So I've gone ahead and pulled out a few different brands of paints here so that I can show you the difference in the bodies, okay? So I have Pabio Blick, which this is my favorite new uh, white that has replaced my Michael's Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. They also sell it in the big jugs. I think it's like 20 bucks for a gallon. It's really cheap. Um... Then I have Amsterdam Heavy Body Golden, Fluid Golden, Prism Pour, and Deco Art. Now, some people get confused and they're like, wait a minute, I thought that this was a pouring medium. Artist left, so it's right there, pouring medium. Well, it is. This is a, a commercially made pouring medium, right? We, however, like to take ingredients and make our own version of something like this. And sometimes that version includes a real pouring medium. So for me, what I do is I just get a measuring cup and I just measure equal amounts of each product. The pouring medium that I just showed you and some Floetrol that I have strained out into this bottle. So, if I put in two cups of the flow trial, I'm gonna put in two cups of the pouring medium. 
It's that simple. This is ounces. All right, this, this measuring cup has all different measurements on it. So apparently I'm using the ounces. <laughs> oh, and it's in, no, that, wait a minute, that's grams, I'm sorry. 150 grams. So that means I'm going to put 150 grams of pouring medium into that. We'll fill it up till it hits that 300 mark. And of course, you could do the same thing with cups or ounces, like I said. Okay. So now I'm going to mix that together. And that is my version of a pouring medium. Okay, so I took my paints and put some in the cup. Just cover the bottom. Don't concentrate really on how much is in there. Just... Add some paint, mix it up. If it's not dark enough, add a little bit more paint. Here's the thing, though. Do you notice something different about one of these cups? You'll notice I have no paint. I did not do this one yet. And here is why. When you have a fluid paint, you do not add it the same way you would your regular paints. So, for example, I have my pouring medium here, and I have my white paint in the cup right now what I would do this is a very thick white I would add a little bit of that pouring medium that I made at a time until it's thinned down enough for me to pour with it you don't want to add it in all at once because it will definitely clump up on you all right so for paints that have body to them like this, you want to add the paint in the cup first and then thin it down with your pouring medium. But when it comes to something like a fluid color, especially a golden fluid, very expensive and very pigmented, what I do is this. Let's say I want to make a half a cup worth of this color. I'll fill the cup up halfway with my pouring medium and add a few drops at a time of this color until I reach the desired color that I want, okay? You'll save a lot of paint doing it that way with this, with the fluid ones. It's very easy to be heavy handed with these. So you just want to add a little bit at a time until you reach the shade that you want. Now I'm happy with that. That's a pretty color. Okay. So that's how you would mix a fluid type of a paint. You would put your pouring medium in first and then slowly add the drops. But for the other brands, now that I have my paints all in there, I'll go one at a time and add just a bit because, again, they clump. If you add too much in, some colors will clump, some will not. And unless you remember which ones do and which ones don't, you're just better off adding a little bit of this at a time until... It thins out and then you can add it all of all the rest at once again how much every artist out there is kind of just estimating one part paint one part flow trawl in reality what they're doing is they're taking some paint putting it in the cup just like I am right now and adding in some pouring medium so if I had a guess, that would have been one part paint, two and a half to three parts flow trawl and pouring medium mixture. Another thing, metallics are always going to seem thicker than your other colors because they have that mica in there. They, they look and feel a little fluffier. As long as it's somewhat close and flowing off the stick, that will be very good, okay? That will work fine. 
show you that consistency. That's what we're looking for. So just kind of mix up your paints and get them to be the same as each other. Here's my Prism Pour, my Baltic Amber, brand new color, absolutely gorgeous. Now these are between a fluid paint and a medium body. So just like the deco art, I know they are not going to clump if I add it all in at once. All right, just like that. I think getting hung up on measurements can hold a person back. I think you just got to, you know, let your freak flag fly. Start pouring that stuff together and experiment. I'm telling you, it's the best way. Don't get so hung up on measurements. Just do it, you know? Beautiful, look at that, but it's perfect. And you see, I'm not measuring whatsoever. Uh, 24K is another one, you can just pour it all right down in because it's not going to clump. That Van Dyke Brown, however, I gotta be careful with, a little bit at a time. So let me show you the difference between a layered cup and a combined cup. So you'll notice I'm letting the paint slide down the side of the cup so that it lands on top of the color that's underneath it. They're not really mixing together. Layering paint in a cup like this will assure that you get some nice crisp lines in your work, whether you're pouring it out straight or you're doing a ring pour. When it comes to things like a dirty pour or a flip cup, you want the paints to combine together and kind of mix up a little bit so that they create some interesting effects in your painting. So for something like a flip cup or a dirty pour, you're going to hold the cup up high when you're pouring the paint down into the other colors. That's going to help the paints churn together as you see right here. I'm pouring the colors in from about three to four inches above the surface of the cup. I'll start lower to the cup and then raise it up a little bit higher. So you see here the difference. So now let's do a flip cup. What you're going to do is you're going to hold your cup in one hand and you're going to take your canvas, flip it over on top of the cup and then with pressure, flip it back over. Now for the time being, I'm going to take this flip cup and kind of just slide it towards the other side of the canvas because I want to do some straight pouring and a ring pour and traveling ring pours. So this here would be considered a straight pour, just letting it pour straight out of the cup. To be considered a ring pour, however, you want to start moving your hand in a circular motion. That will create nice rings of color. Next, let's try a traveling ring pour, which is making a ring pour, circling with your hand and moving around the canvas in all different directions. The paint and the rings are traveling, creating almost like a cyclone effect.
I'm having a holy crap moment, so I had to stop and show you guys this. <laughs> Look at this. Just pouring medium and Floetrol. No silicone. <gasps> oh, I can't wait to flip this cup. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm very excited. Let's see what we get here. So the cup we flipped, what you want to do is pull the cup back, releasing the paint. Do not lift the cup straight up because it will drip and create not so pleasant patterns in your painting. You want to tilt nice and slow paying attention to all of the patterns and at this point is when you have to envision what you're looking for what kind of a composition you're looking for where is this painting going to take you so I have some open areas on my canvas and I decided to do some more traveling ring pours they're really fun to do if you're new to acrylic pouring, I would highly suggest starting off with more easier techniques such as these just to become familiar with the paint and to understand uh, like tilting and just getting used to all of that. And it, it can be very beneficial. When I myself started paint pouring, there was no bloom technique. Uh, there was barely even a swipe technique at that point it was more of these techniques with the cup and it really taught me a lot it taught me what kind of products work well together and which ones don't and as I always say it's best to just experiment and find what works best for you and don't forget if you're not happy with the area like me with this area here just keep adding to it in the end, if you stick with it, you'll end up with a painting that you love. So let's pour some ribbons through this. This is my favorite thing to do right here. The amount of depth that you can create just simply pouring that paint out of the cup onto a canvas is outstanding. Now I'm, I'm, almost finished with this painting up next I'm going to do nothing but ribbon pours and you're going to see just how much depth it can add and you can make a stunning painting with just three or four ribbons so here's a close-up after I've tilted and all of that and uh, we got some really cool effects the shimmer in these paints again outstanding that Baltic amber is gorgeous along with the 24k and uh yeah i'll show you that in a minute with the flash on however you uh want to do your cup for the ribbon pour totally up to you you can layer them you can combine them by pouring up high and letting the paint blend together and that's what we're going to be doing for this one Okay. So same colors, different technique, new canvas. Here we go. So I always start off of the canvas just to get a nice stream flowing and just literally pour across a dry can. That's a dry canvas right there. And you're going to see, like I said, you can really just make a stunning painting with just a couple of ribbons if you wanted to i will however warn you though it's very fun and very addicting and very easy to overdo it i always do but i have so much fun that i don't care it's just a great way to relax and de-stress So now I've just decided to go in and add some white paint into the negative space areas. I didn't have to do that. But again, it's all about me de-stressing and enjoying the process. So I just tilted a little bit 
Now I'm going to use up the rest of my paints. I'm going to put them in a cup. I'm going to take a stick and just swirl them around. That's another way you could blend your paints together. A couple of swirls with the stick. And I'm going to pour some more ribbons. Remember me talking about people doing the same technique, but in a different way or with a different thing and giving it a new name? Well, here you go. A palette knife swirl. <laughs> I'm picking up the paint off of the table and I'm going to use the palette knife to make little ring pours on my canvas. It's a great way to use up that paint that is on the table and not waste. So this type of acrylic pouring is so much fun. And look at the effects I'm getting. No fancy ingredients. You know, like Australian Floetrol or all of that. Just Floetrol and some Artist Loft pouring medium. Very octopusy. So now that this painting is done, I'm going to let it dry. And will I leave it like this? Who knows? Maybe I will come in and black some areas out and really make it pop. Here it is with the flash on and the lights off. And you could just see the colors, how pretty they are. The Baltic Amber looks like it's lighting up underneath the uh, areas that have the dark brown or like right over here you're gonna see it it just looks like it's illuminating it's so pretty so again just have some fun with it experiment don't let those measurements or fear of measurements worry you too much mix up some paint if it cracks you know you're leaving too much paint on the canvas. If your rings don't stay together and you're doing a ring pour, maybe your paints are too thin. You know, ask around in the Facebook groups if you're having issues. I have a Facebook group, United We Pour Fluid Art Group. You can join over there and ask questions. There's so many helpful people and uh, make friends with people that like to do the same thing that you do, right? So that's going to end this first part of the series. I hope you come back for part two. I want to thank you for joining me. Don't forget the Loli Vefe gorgeous geode box. There's only 28 sets left. They sold so fast. The information for those are in the description. You can make a beautiful holiday table this year, just like I'm working on here. Here's one of my platters. And if you didn't see the other ones I was able to make with this kit, you can watch the video before this. All the information about my channel and social media are in the description below. If you're interested in learning with me in person and Canela Sirocco art, you can email fluidartescape at gmail.com. We are having an event July 2022 naples florida it's going to be a blast we have the most amazing sponsors we have loli vefe color art pixel paint amsterdam royal talons and michaels can you believe it michaels is actually going to sponsor what does that mean that means that you are not only going to be taught with the best but you're going to be taking home the best. So if you're interested in attending, please email us at the email listed in the description. I want to thank you all for joining me today. And until the next time, happy pouring.